Hello, this is the third video in the tutorial series, and in this one we're going to take that weight matrix that we made and actually apply it to an image. The first thing we need to do is create a method that takes in a source image, the image that we want to blur. We need to take in the weight and we need to take in the radius of the weights because we are assuming that the weight multidimensional array matrix is an n by n matrix so that it has uniform width and height it's the same the return type of this method will be a buffered image and that will be the image that is blurred I don't take in the radius right now as a parameter but I realize later that I do need to do that so you could add that parameter in now or just wait till later in the video. The next thing we need to do is create uh, two for loops nested so that we can get access to each of the pixel data and its properties of the image. Now we need three multidimensional arrays of color for the red, green, and blue that will store the new red, green, and blue data for the final answer to the image and we need to store these red green and blue arrays up here because we need to compute on them multiple times from the weight matrix to get that distributed color. In those first two for loops that get us access to the pixel data then we're doing the x's less than source image dot get width we need to subtract the radius on both counts for the x and the y because in this algorithm we have black bars and uh, we our kernel cannot access a pixel that's outside of the image so we need to make sure we don't go outside the bounds of our arrays and we subtract the radius from the width and height of the image and if you don't get that now you'll see you'll see that effect later in, in the output now that we have our distributed color arrays and we're two for loops deep into the image we can start to apply the kernel at each pixel of the image so we can start to now iterate that kernel over every single part of our new image. And when I say kernel, I'm referring to that weight matrix. When I read about it online, they seem to be used synonymously. So when I say kernel, I'm referring to that multidimensional weight array of weights. Now that we're in four for loops deep, we can access each element of the kernel at each pixel. That's what these two for loops are doing in here. Now that we're in this deep with for loops, we can really start to work on the actual algorithm of the Gaussian blur. And the first thing that's important to understand is the sample x and sample y variables. You need to understand why they're needed and how they're calculated. So if we didn't have this nested for loop, then we would only be able to access one pixel at a time on the image. This image shows what we could sample if we had the one set, the one nested for loop, or the, the two for loops, at 2020, when x is 20 and when y is at 20, then we could grab the 2020 pixel of the image and get their red, green, and blue components, but then that's all we could do with one nested for loop. By adding the second for loop, we're able to iterate through the pixels around the center pixel that we're at as demonstrated by this image from the previous tutorial. So that being said, we could access the pixel at 2020 and then iterate around a sub-image kind of thing around it and that would be our weight that we could access around the pixel 2020. And this is what sample x and y represent. They represent the pixel, the center pixel, at an offset of wherever we're at in the weight of our weight matrix. So now firstly, before we build the color, let's uh, just access our weight value. And we can do that very simply because we already have the two for loops and we're just going to sample directly from our weights to store that in uh, another variable. Now we can create our color object that the Java ought provides us with. and just construct the color and for our x and y's we're going to pass in our sampled value which remember is at the center at an offset of wherever we're at in the weight matrix then once we have that constructed 
we can uh, populate our distributed color red, green, and blue multidimensional arrays by accessing, which are the size of the weight, because you want to calculate the colors around the center pixel. So we populate that up with the weight by taking, and remember the current weight matrix is just a set of values between 0 and 1 because we normalize them. So we can just take a percent from the middle. And so after we set up all of our multidimensional arrays, we can, we could construct the image and, I mean not the image, we could construct the color that factors in all of the red, green, and blue. Uh, but we are not going to do that because what happens if we're sampling something at an edge? Then we'd be accessing the arrays at, out of bounds and we'd, um, well Java doesn't let us write out of our arrays. So we're going to have to throw us in a try catch for now and uh, and then we'll fix, we'll do, we'll do a better job in a later tutorial about how to handle sampling a pixel outside of the image itself. And we can't forget that the whole point of this method is to return a buffered image. So let's just go ahead and create our answer up at the top. And um, that way we can, we have the information we need to calculate our color of the pixel. So now we just need to make our image and then start to set our image with incorporating the uh, color red, green, and blue values that take into account the weight, weighted color average around the uh, center. This is nearly the final step. We just have to create a method that can take in a weighted color. And remember, we have three weighted colors, red, green, and blue. All we need to do to get them into 256 by 256 color because the set RGB method from the buffered image takes in our X and Y which we have and uh, it takes in a color so we need to construct a new color that is the final answer of all this data and all we need to do is calculate a summation and then uh, that'll be it and that's all this method's gonna do and if you'd like you could even spell the method correctly uh, I spelt it get lighted color value uh, I mean it'll work but you know so that's great now all we're doing is creating the new color right now uh, passing its three parameters and remember the color constructor takes in a red green and blue value and it'll return itself the instance of the color which is not an integer it wants to get RGB wants a hexadecimal color something like 0x FF 00FF or FF0000 for like a, a red uh, but we want to invoke dot get RGB at the end and that'll just turn the color into an integer and give us that hexadecimal version of the color. Uh, this is actually a brute force highly long takes a long time this algorithm does uh, but then again this is just so you can understand the algorithm and implement it in Java you could take it into your own liberty to optimize it um, so I'm just going to print out working here because it's going to take a while for some larger images like sometimes even a minute to calculate the Gaussian blur but <laughs> that's the entire point of this program so it's fine now we're going to go ahead and actually create access our singleton um, our one instance of the Gaussian blur creation thing and it takes in our image that we want to sample from and so we can just do class.class .class and get our resources that way. We could put in an absolute path. Uh, I just do this, that way you can package the jar and uh, export it. And so then that takes in our weights, which we calculated from the last tutorial. And um, we're just running this in a try catch because image io dot read. Uh, in case the image isn't there, it'll fail and print out the stack trace, which is really helpful. I love stack traces. And uh, so let's just initialize our buffered image here and then set it there. But then um, let's just now that that's our answer. So now we just need to write the image to a file, and then that's our answer. That's our uh, the um, the Gaussian blurred. If it runs correctly, then that'll be what the whole point of this tutorial was. So uh, yeah, and this image io dot write takes in a file, and then it also throws the exception 
in case of bad things. See, a legal argument exception. Uh, and there's our rate matrix above it. It's because, usually it's because I name something incorrectly or do a backslash the wrong way. But in this case, I forgot why it doesn't work. I'm watching myself try to figure it out right now. I'm probably doing a good job. It's been a while since I made this video. It's it's uh, St. Patrick's Day right now, and I made this back in 2017. Doing some quick debugging. So it wasn't the backslash. See, even even back at St. Patrick's Day, and what the day it is today, I still think it would be a backslash. Now I'm just trying out an absolute path that I told you you could do. And now I'm just switching out all the backslashes with forward slashes with the control F key. Alright, so now it processed for a while and then it failed. Because if we're getting out of bounds exceptions, that must mean we're sampling from the image, which means that file is actually there. So that's a good thing. Now we're going to try to write true. Okay, so there's our null pointer right there. So answer is null. And I guess it never gets set. It never gets initialized correctly then from Gaussian blur dot. Create Gaussian image. Because if that's null, then trying to write it out to a file would fail because it's null. But there's something always at the end that doesn't work when you're finally testing. Oh, see? See, we were returning null that whole time. We weren't even returning the answer. Yeah, that's silly. But at least the video increased by like four or five minutes of debugging. But, oh, and look at that. Look at that image. Look at that Gaussian blur. Looks like I messed up an X or a Y something. Sometimes I forget to change X's to Y's and Y's to X's. But at least now it's not null. And uh, you see that black beam around, around the image? That's actually because we can't sample something that's outside of the weight matrix. So the bigger you make the weight matrix, oh, see, there's the X and Y problem. But the bigger you make the uh, weight matrix, the more of the black bar you'll have because the less you'll be able to sample out of bounds. Oh, and see, there's our uh, there's our final image of the GTA 5 loading screen guy. Uh, so there's the Gaussian blur working in action. Uh, you got the and it, you you can change when you generate the weight matrix. You don't even need to use a Gaussian function. You can hard code the weight matrix if you want. You can um, use another type of function if you want. Um, this will probably actually run faster too if you don't print out of bounds because the console tends to slow things down a little bit. You can see I made the weight matrix even bigger, so the black bars around it are even bigger. And we're going to discuss solutions to that in the next tutorial. So I hope you like this one, and that's all I have. Uh, I'll try to do another tutorial sometime sooner, not wait um, days. But I'll... <laughs>